What are the most important music theory concepts that you need to know to make learning and improvising over jazz standards much easier? Let's talk about it. If your goal is to learn jazz standards and improvise over them well, I would highly recommend using music theory to help analyze them. Think of it as a really helpful tool for understanding and organizing the music that you're learning. So the first music theory concept you really need to know is secondary dominance. So taking a look at There Will Never Be Another You, which sounds like this. flat major seven that starts here. And this is what the key of the song is in. It's in concert E flat major. Now, an important thing to understand about keys in jazz is the harmonic series. So if we have an E flat major scale and we harmonize it with seventh chords, it goes like this. It goes E flat major seven to F minor seven to G minor seven to a flat major seven, okay? So and then we keep going on through the rest of the scale. However, what we need to know is that these are diatonic to the key center. So when we're looking at jazz standards, we really wanna think about what chords are diatonic to the key center. So for example, when we get to this C minor in bar five, we know that that is the sixth chord of E flat major, but we have two chords in the way of that, and that's a D minor seven flat five and a G seven. Right? Now this is a two, five, one of C minor seven. Whenever you see a half diminished chord followed by a dominant seventh chord resolving to a minor seventh chord, that is a two, five, one in a minor key. Now, however, what we need to understand about this C minor seven is again, it is the sixth chord of a major key, E flat major. So a secondary dominant is this chord right here, the G seventh chord. And a secondary dominant by definition is any dominant seventh chord that is tonicizing another chord within the diatonic key center. So in other words, G7 isn't in the key of E flat major, but it's serving as a purpose to make the ear sound as if the C minor seven is a new one chord, even though it's still technically the sixth chord within the key of E flat major. So secondary dominance, you're gonna see these come up a lot. So it's simply tonicizing another diatonic chord within the series, making it sound like a new tonal center, at least momentarily. The second music theory concept that we need to talk about is another dominant seventh chord, and it's called the back door dominant. Now this comes up quite a bit, and if you're seeing it in jazz standards you're trying to learn, it could be confusing to you at first until you learn to recognize what it is. So in this particular case of There Will Never Be Another You, we actually see it come up in bar 10. So we have this resolution to an A flat major, and then we have a D flat seven. And the important thing to look at when you're looking at a dominant seventh chord is where is it resolving to? So kind of like how the G seven resolved to a C minor seven, we call it a secondary dominant. We actually can look and see that this D flat seven resolves to an E flat major seven. Now remember, we're in the key of E flat for there will never be another U. So in other words, we're resolving to that E flat major seven. So this D flat seven is called the backdoor dominant. And you can also think of it as a flat seven of the key center. So a backdoor dominant by definition is a dominant seventh chord that approaches a one chord from a whole step below. So D flat seven is a whole step below than E flat major seven. Okay. Now the reason that works is because actually there are some shared tension tones with the five chord of E flat major seven, the five chord being B flat seven. So particularly there's the flat seven and the flat nine that they share, but because you're kind of getting this muddied version of a dominant seventh sound and it has this resolution up a whole step, it sounds pleasing to the ear and it makes this backdoor dominant sound like a resolution chord to some one chord. So that's a backdoor dominant comes up quite a bit in jazz standards. Now the third important music theory concept you need to know is what's called relative keys. So one jazz standard that's a great example of this is Autumn Leaves. Okay, now what really we have going on inside of this tune is two key centers. We have B flat major seven, and G minor seven, or at least I think that's the easiest way to really think about this particular tune. And when we look at the key signature, we have a B flat and an E flat. So 
In this particular case, this tune is actually in the key of G minor, okay? We resolve to G minor throughout the tune, we resolve to G minor at the end. Now, the reason that's even a question to worry about is the fact that we have what's called relative keys. The key of B flat major and the key of G minor share the exact same key signature as each other, two flats, B flat, and E flat, meaning they share all of the same notes in the scales, except for they're just arranged in a different way. Another way to even analyze Autumn Leaves with the first three bars, which I have as C minor seven, F seven, B flat major seven, which is a two, five, one in B flat major. Another way to analyze that is simply relating all these chords to G minor. And so actually the C minor chord is also the four chord of G minor, and the F7 is actually the seven chord of G minor. So they all share the same key signature, they share the same key center, and you're gonna see this come up a lot in jazz standards. So if you can recognize relative keys and how they relate to each other, it's gonna be helpful for you to organize the jazz standards that you're learning. Now, speaking of keys, the next music theory concept I want you to understand is what's called parallel keys, okay? Parallel keys. And parallel keys, a good example of that shows up in On Green Dolphin Street. Right? That tune. So, we have a C major 7 to start out the tune, and then in bar 3 we move to a minor C. So we have C minor all of a sudden. And you'll notice that I have this labeled as a minor one chord. So we call this parallel keys, meaning that we have whatever major key we have, C, and parallel key is simply taking that exact same note value, so C in this particular case, but turning the chord quality value into its minor key, right? So it could go the other way around too. We could have C minor to start and the parallel major would be C major, right? And so the parallel minor to C major is obviously C minor. So it's a pretty simple concept, but one that you'll certainly see play out many different times within jazz standards. And before we go on to the next music theory concepts, it's important to tell you that learning more jazz standards is going to help you recognize these music theory concepts come up over and over again. And if this is confusing at first, it gets way easier to recognize these the more jazz standards you learn. So if you want help with learning jazz standards, definitely check out my free guide called Learn Jazz Standards the Smart Way, five-step process to learning jazz standards by ear. Learn jazz standards the smart way .com is where you can get that. All right, let's move on to the next music theory concept. The next music theory concept you need to know is called side step two fives. And good example of this shows up in Just Friends. <laughs> So we start with a C major seven that goes to a C minor seven, F seven. It's actually referencing the parallel minor, but let's not worry about for right now. We resolve to the G major seven. And by the way, did you notice that this F seven is also a backdoor dominant going to G major seven? Want to tie that concept back in while we're talking about this one. But once we get to this G major seven, we have this line that goes B flat minor seven, E flat seven. Now, again, whenever we're analyzing harmony, we have to look at what comes before it and after it. We know that G major seven comes before it. So B flat minor seven to E flat seven. Now this E flat seven resolves to an A minor seven D seven. A minor seven D seven in the key of G major is a two five chord progression. And B flat minor seven and E flat seven is a two five chord progression within A flat major. So whenever we have these two fives, that approach each other chromatically like that. We call this a side step two five by approaching it chromatically. I also like to call these chromatic two fives because they move in half step. So sometimes these are baked in to the actual compositions themselves, like Just Friends, but sometimes solos would just superimpose these into their compositions. <laughs> Something like that, right? So chromatic approaches to the one chord. So that is sidestep two fives, important concept to know. The next music theory concept you need to know is what are called hybrid two fives. And hybrid two five, a great example of that comes up in the jazz standard alone together. <laughs> That's 
right there. That's at this D major chord that happens at the end of the first A section. So a hybrid two five is where we're taking what would seem like a minor two five one chord progression. Well, you have this E minor seven, E minor seven flat five. And instead of resolving the two E minor seven flat five, A seven to a D minor seventh chord, we're resolving to a D major seven chord. So we're borrowing from the parallel major. See why it's helpful to understand what those concepts are. We also, by the way, call this modal interchange. We're interchanging these two key centers with each other. So a hybrid two five is when you have a minor two five progression that instead of resolving to its minor chord, resolves to a major seventh chord. And you'll see this happen in tunes like Beatrice and I Love You and a bunch of other tunes. So be on the lookout for these hybrid two fives. The next important music theory concept you want to know about is called deceptive cadences. Deceptive cadences. Sometimes when we're looking at jazz standards, we just can't make sense of why the composer chose a certain chord. And sometimes having a label like deceptive cadence can be helpful. For example, in Someday My Prince Will Come. So we have this B flat major seven. It's a one chord, it's the key center, B flat major, to a D seven sharp five. Now that's the three dominant seventh chord. It's also a five of six, five of six. That means it's a secondary dominant. It's tonicizing the sixth chord. So you would actually expect it to go to the sixth chord, which would be G minor seven, or in this particular case, in some my day my prince will come, it actually resolves to another secondary dominant, which is the dominant sixth chord. That might sound really confusing, but all that to say, we actually don't resolve to that sixth chord. We have this E flat major seven in the way. We have. Right, that's actually an E flat major seven sharp 11. At least that melody note is the sharp 11. And then we get to the dominant sixth chord. So when we have a chord that's being resolved to that is unexpected, that wouldn't normally be resolved to from the chord coming before it, we call this a deceptive cadence. It's temporarily, in this case, replacing the sixth chord. Again, this is a helpful way to look at a set of chord progressions that may confuse you at first and putting a label to it to better understand it. The next music theory concept you need to understand is what's called passing diminished chords. Now, passing diminished chords come up all the time in jazz standards, such as in this B section, if you could call it the B section of Someday My Prince Will Come. <laughs> So we have this D minor seven to a D flat diminished seven to a C minor seven to an F seven. So in this particular case, we're moving down through the roots. We have D to D flat to C minor. And we know that D minor right here, that's the three chord. And we know that C minor is the two chord. So the passing diminished chord is really just serving to connect the D minor seven, the three chord, to the two chord, which is the C minor seven to the F seven. It's a two five in B flat major. So that's one way a passing diminished chord can function. It sounds beautiful. Right, it has a beautiful sound connecting them together. But another way you can find a passing diminished chord functioning is kind of like what we see in Have You Met Miss Jones, where we have an F major seventh chord followed by an F sharp diminished seventh chord and a G minor seven chord. Now, in this particular case, it's actually a substitution for a chord. It's a substitution for the sixth chord. So instead of going one, six, the sixth chord would be D seven. Then we are instead substituting it with an F sharp diminished seventh, right? Now it's still a passing diminished chord because it's going F to F sharp to G, to G 
minor seventh, right? So it's still moving in those half step directions, connecting them together. But the F sharp diminished, if you actually take a look at that chord, it's the same as playing a D7 flat nine, okay? So in other words, they're completely related chords to each other, the D7 flat nine, the dominant six chord flat nine, and the passing diminished chord. So sometimes you have a scenario as in Someday My Prince Will Come where it's not substituting a chord, it's just passing through, and also a situation where you are substituting a chord like in Have You Met Miss Jones. Now, like I mentioned, if there's a lot of terms for you and you're just wondering how can I find these and learn these better, simply learning more jazz standards is going to absolutely help you get more familiar with these and start identifying these. So I have a video on the screen right now. It is a set of 10 jazz standards that I think are really awesome to learn and you'll find a lot of these concepts in them. So be sure to click on that video and watch that one next and pick a few of those jazz standards to learn. Hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you like it if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.